Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little, little bit. I've been uh, very busy actually. Uh, work has been kind of busy. We are trying to keep these trucks rolling because the industry itself is kind of crap. Um, thankfully we landed a good contract haul in 60 foot pipes, but I mean, that only keeps us so busy. So I'm always looking for work. Uh, I got two little creatures growing in my girlfriend's belly now. Two twins gonna be doing in August. Boys, there we're at 19 weeks, just over we're at 19 and a half weeks. I'm just gonna go for some lunch here, which is really, I, I'm so I'm so excited. I mean, that'll put us at seven kids, so I'm going to need a bigger vehicle than this overall, but it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Um, so I haven't had time lately to make any videos. I haven't been working on any projects. I did get my Yukon fixed. I got a new grill on there, new headlights, uh, fixed the front bumper. It was completely bent after I got uh, hit in the deer, but I managed to actually straighten it quite good. Um, did manage to get all my check engine clothes cleared up, um, the lean codes and uh, vacuum leak and the O2 sensor, not the O2 sensor, the mass airflow sensor, map sensor codes, all gone. That was intake manifold gaskets. Super easy to fix. Um, probably the easiest intake gaskets I've ever done, ever. So that's great. So this thing's running like a jam. Um, unfortunately, on the trucking side of things, things are really downhill. Freight rates are dropped so bad. Now, I don't know, those of you who are watching this or in trucking or know much about it, but freight rates are basically half of what they are, were, and half of what they should be. Um, we're getting around $2 a kilometer right now on average, I think it's what's working out. It's not, it's not good. I'm even seeing as low as a buck a kilometer. And I, I don't know how these guys are making that work. Like even when I try to broker loads out, it's not not going so well. Um, and unfortunately we just got another $14,000 repair bill for one of our trucks. So I wanted to get work done on the Peterbilt we got CVIPs coming up and all sorts of stuff, and now we got a fourteen thousand dollar estimate that was that's up from the original six thousand dollar estimate. Um, the rear structure you needed doing on the twenty ten Kenworth that that we knew for a while. It'd been leaking a significant amount of oil every single day, and just pours out while you're while you're sitting there. Um, and then the clutch, of course, we had an idea, so that was part of the estimate as well. So that went up to about seven, eight, nine thousand dollars, whatever it was. And now all of a sudden we got <laughs> rear engine mounts. That's going to add another chunk of money. And uh, oil cooler was loose on top of the transmission cover, and a bolt broke, and that's adding more money. So all of a sudden now we're up to fourteen thousand dollars. Another big reason for that big bill is Kenworth specifically in Leduc, I, I'm sure it's all the Kenworths, I'm not sure exactly who, but they're now at $215 an hour for labor. $215, up from, it, I swear it was $165 or $170 not that long ago here. Now it's $215. Truckers, trucks don't even make $215 an hour anymore. Uh, and all these other new trucking companies coming around, are just driving the rates so far underground I don't know how it's feasible for companies to survive when you get those kind of bills and I'm actually going to start showing some customers who are demanding lower their rates be lower and I'm going to show them bills and show what it takes to upkeep a truck because people have no idea when it's you know it's just, it just makes my head hurt Anyway, that's that side of things, the money side of things. Also, 
had something interesting happen this week. We got scammed. I mean, we weren't badly affected as far as we know, but we did get scammed by a U.S. trucking company, trucking companies, um, by the non-English speaking variety. I'm not prejudiced in any way, just demographic known for making scam calls to people. Um, what happened was they called me up, said, hey, we'll do this load for you, because I had posted a load, we can do it ourselves, so if I get somebody else to do it, that's no problem. Do it every day. This guy looked legit, the MC number looked up good, their insurance looked valid, everything was valid, everything was valid, the whole company was, it's an actual company. Um, unfortunately, they said they, their truck broke down, okay, things happen. Then it was two days and I asked, what's going on with your truck? They said, oh, they still don't know what's going on with the engine. Well, I'm starting to get a little bit suspicious. And then the next day I said, okay, what's happening with the truck? We need an update. And they say, well, it's broke down. So I, now I'm suspicious. So I started looking up their company. And I start finding little details, like their address is not their business address. It's actually um, an oral surgery clinic in Texas, um, which is apparently where their company's from. And then I reposted the load again to find somebody else to do it. And lo and behold, somebody else from the same company, this time named Bob, the first guy was Daniel. Bob, no, Tom. Tom emails me and asks, what do you have moving? So I say, your co-worker took this load for us and couldn't get it done because apparently the truck broke down and he asks who is this Daniel now now I'm a little concerned that he doesn't know his co-worker's name so I start digging it a little further and now somebody else emailed named Bob from an act fast delivery uh, the first company that was doing it was called Viva Unique Transportation um, now, the funny thing is, the subject lines in both emails, one from Viva and one from Act Fast, were identical. They only had a first name, no last names on the personal name part, Bob, Tom, Daniel, and their emails were tom.vivaunique at gmail.com and then bob.actfastdelivery at gmail.com. I thought, okay, that's weird, the subject line being same identical really weird so I googled and I found a forum on inside trucker other people having problems with this company I'm like okay all these three company two companies and the third one are all affiliated with each other so I started digging in and I get called him I called him one time he said he transferred me to Daniel they hung up on me the second time I call a few minutes later no answer the third time I called some guy named Hugh name's not you, guaranteed. He answers, he transfers me to Daniel. Daniel sounds like another guy I spoke to there called Frank. Daniel and Frank sound the same. Maybe they're not the same person, but they sure sound the same. Daniel says the truck broke down, still don't know. So I asked what shop he's at, because I know it doesn't take half a week to diagnose most majority of things. So I asked, what shop's your truck at? And he got irate with me. Um, I started just blasting me, so I knew we had bigger problems. And then I look up their MC number, and one truck, four trailers, one driver. Um, and then it says on the bottom for cross border or whatever, their MC number not authorized. I'm like, well, oh, crap. So I'm cancel the load altogether. I make a formal complaint and to the USDOT. I called the FMCSA or whatever it's called there and they're going to do an investigative thing. And the more I researched this, the more I found these guys are frauds. And they were definitely frauds. There's no way their names are Bob, Tom, Frank, Daniel, and you. Anyway, needless to say, I wasn't affected, no money was taken, thankfully, um, and no money, no problems arise with my customer. 
it's just unfortunate customers are just not happy because the load's not getting moved so it's been it's been a trying week unfortunately um but it is what it is onwards and upwards so it, now when i find new carriers i'm just gonna try and uh investigate into them a little deeper and find new ways of ensuring they are legitimate before I give them work. So if you ever run across Viva Unique Transportation or Act Fast Delivery or Genetic Brokerage, they're all affiliated. They're all based out of Texas, apparently. And yeah. So I am just heading for lunch right now but I just wanted to make a little video on this unfortunate things going on oh and the carbon tax is hitting April 1st that's that part's gonna suck um, that's just gonna hit our fuel bill more and guess what the rates aren't freight rates aren't going up any everything else is going up but our income is not so who knows how much longer we're gonna last it's kind of the headache is unbearable we're doing our best too like we're not afraid to take on all different types of jobs there's just too much competition there's way too many trucking companies out there doing stuff so maybe it'll be time to look for a new line of work which is unfortunate because i love being around trucks and i have been for 20 years um it is what it is anyway i do have a couple other videos in the making so if you want to talk trucks got something to add to this conversation share a story about you guys getting scammed uh feel free to post it in the comments maybe we'll dig into something and make another interesting video anyway please like and subscribe if you can i'm i'm trying to get this thing the ball rolling here so thanks and have a good day